the line over I can hear what you say. You know, I know that uh, a lot of people think I'm a, I'm a strange preacher. And a lot of people think that uh, a lot of times that I go out a little on the, on the limb. And uh, a lot of times I know I make other, other people kind of scream sometimes, from maybe from the things that I say and the things that I do. But, uh, you know, we're all trying to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and whenever, whenever I think about going to heaven and then make some kind of little silly mistake, that would keep me from entering in the gates. Mm. Have you ever thought about how that would feel? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Get right up to the gates of heaven and you turn around. Say, no, you've done this. Or that happened. You didn't, repent, yeah. you didn't warn them. You had the opportunity and you didn't do it. Now somebody got to be held accountable for it. That's right. Amen. See, we're... we're we're living in a in a time, and I, I keep saying this, and and I, I'll keep saying it as long as I have breath to tell you this, until the Jesus spits the clouds of glory. I'm going to be telling you this. We're living in a time just before the coming of the Son of Man. I believe that. Amen. I believe that it's not going to be long. I believe that people in this building tonight that said in this building tonight in this congregation, I believe with all my heart that they will see the coming of the Son of Man. I believe that. And, and we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to help somebody or to say something that will give somebody that little uplift that they need. Have you ever been down? Amen. Everybody in here knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. You ever been down? And when you seem like you're the lowest you can be, somebody puts their foot in your face? Uh -huh. Amen. Brian, say, my goodness, what's happening? What's going to happen next? Have you ever said that? Amen. What in the world could happen next? I've been through all this, and look here. See, we are living in a time. Pick up your newspaper. Pick up your newspaper in the morning. Guarantee you, there will be something that will absolutely blow your mind. <laughs> something that... 20 years ago was unheard of. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 20 years ago you wouldn't even have dreamed of it. You wouldn't have thought the world could have been that wicked. And then all of a sudden here we are having to face it. As we begin to face it, we begin to look at it and we say, oh my goodness, what in the world is the world coming to? I tell you what it's coming to. It's coming to the end of time. Amen. God's fixing to say that's enough. He's fixing to say, Gabriel, pick up the horn. Amen. Pick up the horn and blow it, because I'm going to bring my people home. I feel Amen. the presence. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Won't that be a day? Listen to, in, in, the, in the book of Matthew, in the book of Matthew, we're living in, and, 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 and a, a person showed me some pictures tonight on the phone. And, and you know, I, I, I've had this on my mind for, for I don't know how long, ever since I heard of it, uh, of how this little baby was, was, Practically born. You know, how, how wicked is this world coming to? What's it coming to? We have got to be a people. Listen, we have got to be... The, the Bible speaks of us as being a separated people. Amen. People that are separated from the world. Now, that don't mean that we, we don't live in the world. We have to. We have to go to our jobs every day. We have to do the things that's, that's natural. But we can separate ourselves from the things that the devil would have us to do. Right, we right. can say no. He said shun the very parents of evil. Whenever you see evil, don't go around it and leave it alone. Right. Don't even have no part of it. Because he said I'm going to take and, and, and I'm going to pull you out. Just hang them with me. Now listen to what it says in the book of, in the book of Matthew in the 7th uh, uh, chapter. It says this in the 13th verse. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Enter ye in at the straight gate. In other words, he's giving you a platform right there, something to go on, something to understand. 
enter ye in at the straight gate. Don't go over here amongst all the other stuff and try to get in because it will not take you in there. But enter ye in at the straight gate, the one that is right way, the one that you have to take to get to where we're going. Amen. Now, I said from the very beginning, everybody in this building tonight, we're trying to get to heaven. That's our whole intent tonight. If it wasn't, you know what? We'd be out in the world. We'd be out doing everything that we, our, our minds would give, could uh, could comprehend everything that we could get in our mind. We would be out there doing it. Amen. We'd be trying to get all the pleasure of life out of it that we could get. But it says, enter ye in at the straight gate. Plain and simple. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Enter ye. It gives you a road map. It gives you the understanding, the whole thing. For wide is the gate, then broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. See, there is two ways right there. There's two ways. Very plain and simple. There's a straight gate, the one that we have to go in, and then there's a gate that is wide. It's the one that you can just go out any way you want to, do whatever you want to, however you want to do it, and everything is going to be all right. No, it is not. <laughs> no, man. Whenever that you take that gate, this gate that I'm talking about tonight, that narrow gate, you're not going to walk through with five or six of them and a breast. It's going to take the footstep one after the other in order to get in. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. Now listen to this. This is what I wanted to get to tonight. This is what I wanted to get to. The next verse, uh, the next uh, sentence in it is the one that we need to really get our minds upon. And few there be that find it. Amen. There's not very many. You know, we've got a world full of religious people. We've got all kinds of churches, and, and probably by the, this time next week, next year, there will probably be three or four dozen different people that have come up with something, and we're going to have a different denomination. We're going to start a new doctrine. We're going to have something going on that nobody else has got. We want this thing that is, uh, that is uh, something that don't nobody, we have to teach them and learn them how that we need to be. See, I've said this from the very beginning, and I'll never quit saying it. There's only one plan of salvation. I don't care how many denominations, I don't care how many doctrines, I don't care how many there is, you can line them up and you can stack them till they, they reach the sky, but there's only one plan of salvation. If you're looking for another, forget it, because you're not going to find it. Amen. You can come up with all kinds of doctrines, and all kinds of other stuff. It's not going to do you a bit of good. I'm going to preach you the gospel tonight. I'm going to tell you what it's going to take to get you from here through the straight gate. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Hallelujah. And on the third day, the stone was rolled back. I feel the Holy Ghost. And the stone was rolled back. And on the 40th day, he ascended into heaven. And my friend, let me tell you something. Without that man, Jesus Christ, without the shedding of the blood, there's no way that you're going to get from here through the straight gate into the portals of heaven. Amen. You know, we're trying to make it. Everybody here is trying to make it. You know, I, I, I begin, I'm going I'm to go on over just a little further. And I want to read you some more, another thing here. This day that we're living in right now, it's this thing that, that you know, if we, we, you would think that uh, if everybody really got their mind on what heaven was going to be like, you know what? This church house here, and one ten times as big as this wouldn't one hold. tonight, wouldn't hold everybody that was here if they could see the portals of heaven and see how it really was. Amen. There'd be nothing to stop them. They'd be parked from here to the city limits. They'd be out in the fields. They'd be walking in the ditches if it was knee deep in water Amen. to get to church, to get to the place they could work Amen. and worship for God. Amen. But you look around yourself tonight. You look around and you see how the world, how it is. People's minds are completely disturbed. Amen. People's minds are going here, there. It's just, it's just unreal. You know, what you hear goes on that every day. Look into your school systems. Look at that. They take every precaution they can. They know it's coming, but they're just trying to prepare themselves for it. Now listen to this. Now this is speaking of Jesus. 
But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. We're going down to the to the to the ninth verse in the thirty thirty six. The, the ninth chapter, thirty six verse. And when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. I don't know about y'all. I was raised up on a sheep farm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. I was raised up. I was raised up. My dad had. They had sheep, and and um, let me tell you something. If you've never been around sheep, if you don't know anything about them, you got a, something that you need to learn about to get into a world that you're raising sheep. They will scatter, but one person they will take to. Whatever he goes, whatever they do, whatever he does, they will go and they will do whatever it is. Yep. There's an imaginary line in a sheep's mind. There's an imaginary line in a sheep's mind. The first sheep that crosses that imaginary line will jump that line. Even though there's nothing there that exists, that sheep will jump that line. And every sheep behind it. Every sheep, if there's 500 in the group, every time that that sheep, that the next sheep, comes to that imaginary line, he will jump it. They get scattered. They get their mind. See, that's what's wrong with the world today. They have got an imaginary line out there that they are trying to follow, and there's no imaginary line there. They are scattered as sheep. The world is scattered with every kind of doctrine, every kind of religion that you can throw in front of them, and they won't take the Word of God. They want to skip around everything except the truth, and they won't latch on to the truth and the true living God. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenty. Hallelujah. Listen to what I'm telling you. The harvest out there today is falling over. The grain is ripe. You ever heard that song, Harvest Time? Mm -hmm. Harvest Time. Mm -hmm. The grain is falling. The Savior's calling. Come on, people. It's time that we woke up. It's time that we begin to think, I have got to do something for the Lord. I have got to find somebody that I can help. I've got to get somebody to understand that there's only one plan of salvation, not five or six hundred, only one. Amen. I've said this so many times. Sometimes it sounds like a broken record, but I'm telling you tonight, uh, and listen to what I'm telling you, there won't be another crucifixion. Amen. Jesus won't die on the cross again. He died one time and that's it. There won't be another stone uh, rolled away from the tomb uh, before he can walk out. Uh, that won't happen again. Uh, he's going up. Uh, he went up. Uh, he's not going up again. He is coming down uh, and he's coming that's after right. his people. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now listen to what it says. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. He's produced it. It's there. Everything is there. That he will send forth labors unto the harvest. Unto the harvest. See, we've got to stand fast on one thing. That's the two principles. We have got to stay with the two principles. We've got to stay with the gospel of Christ. Yep. You, know, I, I, you know, the gospel is the good news. The gospel is the good news. I'm going to preach you the good news, okay? Whenever that way I get up here and I preach you, whenever I tell you that we're going to heaven, that's the good news. Amen. That's the good news. You know, and, and but whenever that we get up here and we tell you, you got to hold on. We're almost home. This is good news. You know, a lot of people say, oh my goodness, the end of time, they're preaching. The end of time is just about to hit us. I mean, everything is fixing to fall apart. The world's going up in smoke. It is. But my friend, we're not going to be here while it's going on. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be out of here. God is going to call His people out, and we're going to be gone. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest 
that he will send forth laborers unto the harvest. You know, and I look around and I see as a church, every little bit, you see a little growth in the church. Now a lot of people say, well, I don't see nothing. I do. I'm up here where I can see it. I'm up here where I, I know. I, I, I live every day. I get the phone calls. I get, the, I get all the people telling me about the troubles and all this other stuff. And then I look and I, I, I lay way up and I, get the, and, and I see the growth that is happening in the church. Now, we're going to have a growth in the church. But them that come into the church and it grows in, they're going to be steadfast in the, in the Lord. They're going to be steadfast. They're going to be them when you meet on the street and they're going to, they're going to ask them a question. How was service last Sunday night? How was service last Thursday night? You know what you're going to be able to say? We had a Holy Ghost outpouring Amen. power of God to move in our Amen. church. Amen. It's like tonight. I felt the presence of the Lord. Yes, sir. I felt the Amen. presence of the Lord. I wouldn't trade that for nothing. Amen. And you know what? I expect to have more of it before I leave this building tonight. I expect to feel the presence of God. But also, I expect uh, next Sunday morning uh, to feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. I expect to feel the presence of the Lord next Sunday night. I expect to hear the singing and the worship that we live and that we put out to the Lord. To the praise that we put out. Amen. You know, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. And I'm not going to call no names right now, but it makes me feel good to see people take hold and begin to sing. Begin to get up here and take that mic and begin to sing. Amen. You know what? That does something for me. It makes me feel good down deep inside of me. Amen. I say, God, look at this growth. That is growth beyond beyond belief. There is something that is taking place that nobody can can explain it. Even the ones that's doing it cannot explain it. They just know they feel it and they're going to do it. Amen. That's right. You know what that does? That makes me know that the harvest is right. The harvest is right. Somebody is picking up the sickle. Somebody is putting in the sickle. Somebody is doing something. Somebody is reaching out to try to win one more soul. See, that's what we want to do. We want to gain some souls in. We want people to come in and give their heart to the Lord. We want people to come in and begin to work. You know what? You watch a year from now, and you watch and see what's happening on this hillside. Amen. Oh, the devil, the devil's going to and fro. See, he's, he's, he's spreading discord just as much as, as he can. He's doing everything he can to try to make discouragement come over. But my friend, let me tell you something. God's people is not going to be discouraged. God's people know where they're going. Just like Ed said so many times, I've read the back of the book. I know where I'm going. I've read the book. I know where I'm going to be. When, and, and, and I'm not going to worry about everything else. I'm going to just keep digging in, digging in, and doing more, and doing more. And you know what? One of these days, it'll all pay off. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've enjoyed this service. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I felt the presence of the Lord. I felt the presence of the Lord. Whenever I can feel that, I know Amen. that the Lord is in the house. Amen. He's here. And I, think, I was singing today. I was, uh, 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 it was a song that said, we sang on the radio. I can't remember what the song was. But it was talking about Jesus Christ and how that you could feel His Spirit. Why? Because He went to the cross. And He, he died on that cross. And He went to that cross that we could feel His Spirit. Won't well, that something? Isn't that something that we can feel the presence of the Lord? Amen. Yeah, that, that should mean more to anybody than anything else. You know what that does? That gives us a little taste of what heaven's going to be like. One of these days we'll move out of here. And when we do, we're going to move into the portals of heaven. Won't that be a day? Won't that be a time? Won't that be a time? I hope y'all got some little something out of this tonight. But remember this. Remember our church Sunday morning. We're going to have church here Sunday morning. And Sunday night, I'm praying that these people that's not getting to come on Sunday morning will get to come. And somehow or another, God will move in their life. Give them another job. Or Give them a better job or do something where they can come. I'm not calling Pam's name, but I, I'm sorry, Pam. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Or Shannon either. Yeah, it's Shannon. I'm not going to call her yeah, name. Jennifer's playing. Jennifer's playing hooky Sunday night. Jennifer's playing hooky Sunday night. 
Hi. Jennifer's playing hooky Sunday night. Oh boy, we'll, 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 we'll get her. <laughs> but just just keep just keep hanging in there, people. Just keep hanging in there. We're 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 gonna we're gonna come out on the big end. Oh yeah. We sure are. We're gonna come out on, on the big end. And uh, I, I'm I'm glad for the ones that came out tonight. And uh, just keep praying for the church. Keep keep praying for the church. We're, 